Hi folks, Aaron here from Aaron's Practical Reviews and I thought I'd make an entire video focusing on the kit lens and kind of my experiences on how I've maximized the potential of the kit lens. It's usually the lens that most people get first and that's their first, you know, in their introduction to DSLRs or mirrorless or whatever. It comes with the kit lens. So, you know, I, I don't have some magic formula to make the kit lens, you know, give the same image quality as a, you know, a very expensive lens. But I do have some tweaks and some, you know, settings and stuff that you can change. Customize it to get more out of it. Let me switch here from this right now to full auto mode. And this has the image stabilization turned on on both the lens and the digital IS on the T7i. So as you can see instantly, the color is different. It's cropped in just a little bit. And if you look close enough, you can see there's, it's just not quite as sharp because of the image stabilization. So in this particular setup here, the image stabilization actually works against you. So you can get a little bit more sharpness out of the kit lens without the image stabilization on in this situation. And then also changing the color, setting your own ISO, your own shutter speed, in order to do that, you kind of have to jump out of your comfort zone for a little bit and start experimenting in manual mode. I, you know, I was there too. I did the same thing. It's all part of the learning process. But and what I did here is I turned off all image stabilization first because it's on a tripod. Next thing I did was I set the aperture to the minimal setting. Now on the kit lens, when it zoomed all the way into 55, the minimum aperture is 5.6. Okay, and I have it zoomed all the way in there to 55, so that way I could create a little bit of separation from the background. If I had this all the way up to the 18, and it was right up on me. So this is the kit lens at 18 millimeters. And as you can see here, it's a huge difference in the look of it. And I am I can reach up and touch it. Right there, I'm touching it. It's that close. It's It's like a foot and a half away from my face. It's ridiculously close. I don't like this look at all. That's why I put it all the way as far back as possible at 55. And I'm going to show you here in a second at 35. But I think the farther back you go, the more separation you get from the background. And it's just a more pleasing image on the kit lens. So obviously if you're vlogging or something like that and you got to hold it up in your hand, it's, it's nice because it's really wide. So it's useful in that regard. Plus it has the image stabilization it gives a nice appearance while you're walking but for this type of situation i just feel like this is just way too close i don't like this look behind me i don't like this look of, of a video plus my face is like a bit like fish bold i don't like it so i prefer it to be back farther so let me go to like around a 35 focal length and kind of get in between and see how that looks so here we are at 35 millimeters and one thing to note about the kit lens is that it is a variable aperture zoom. So when you're at 18 millimeters, it's at f4. When you max it to 55 millimeters, you're at f5.6. So you do have to change your ISO and your shutter speed accordingly to the zoom. However, even with that said, I don't mind going from f4 to 5.6 and moving the moving it back further for the 55 millimeter look, which kind of gives me slightly more separation from the background and lets me control the compression in kind of the, the field of view a lot more at 55. I just, I like the look of it being farther back, more personal preference than that fisheye look of having the camera right up to me. I understand there are restrictions based on space and everything, which also leads to, you know, the fact that this is an 18 to 55 gives you more leeway with that. So if you're in a tighter space, open it up to 18, deal with the that. But I have the space here to move it back a couple more feet. So I choose to do that because I think it looks better. So again, so this is the 35 millimeter look on with my settings. I had to change a few things because of that variable aperture. Okay. Then I also changed this to the fine detail. When I'm using the kit lens, I up the sharpness strength. So you can up that all the way to seven. It'll help make your images sharper. Again, this is all for video. Change the white balance. I'm gonna change it to daylight. It adds a little bit of warmth to the shot and it doesn't look as whitewashed. But I notice for me personally, on daylight, 
when I'm shooting at that setting, I appear very red. So that's why I turned down the contrast just one notch here in the fine detail. I'll come in here, I'll turn the contrast down one notch here. And I noticed that blend with my skin tone seems to work really well for me. The, the typical rule of thumb for the shutter speed, twice as much as your frame rate. So if I'm running 30 frames a second, you want it at 60. Well, I dropped it to 50 because it's an F5.6. It's just a hair under. I upped the ISO to 400. Ideally, I'd like to have that ISO at 100, but being at 5.6 and I have so much light in here already, I would have to bring in a lot more light to get that to 100. So these settings combined give me that look that I showed you on the kit lens. So just for comparison purposes and to compare and contrast, I want to show the this against the 50 millimeter f 1.8 with with the same tweaks. And now right now I have this set as close to 50 millimeters as possible and it's showing a maximum aperture of 5 f 5.6. This is an f 1.8. Now the biggest difference between this and the kit lens is that the kit lens obviously is a maximum aperture of uh, f4 to f5.6 or a minimum aperture i should say and this is the f1.8 but also the kit lens has image stabilization which you would notice a huge difference it, while you're walking around like doing walking around videos and stuff like that and then also for photography reasons uh this is drastically different and much more unique than the kit lens. But this is about the kit lens, but I do want to show a quick comparison in video between the kit lens and the 50 millimeter. All right, so this is the Canon 50 millimeter F1.8. And I think I got the focal length of the kit lens pretty close because these look fairly close and similar. Now the biggest difference here, like I said, it's F1.8. And also now it's running at ISO 100 and I had to bump the shutter speed all the way up to 100 to compensate for the amount of light that I had just to run the kit lens at an ISO of 400. So it's just, it's drastically different, but I wanted to show and contrast and compare here real quick since like I said, this is about the kit lens, but I want to show what this can do for an extra 125 bucks if the kit lens is something that's just not cutting it for you in this type of indoor shoot. And then also for photography reasons, this lens is drastically different than the kit lens. So anyways, I just want to show this real quick as a compare and contrast. Okay, folks, so I know this video has been mostly aimed at the video aspects of the kit lens and how to maximize that. For photography, honestly, I don't have a whole lot to add to it simply because I've just, I don't get a whole lot out of the lens that's much different than snapshots, honestly, because of the maximum aperture being f4. I mean, yeah, you can get some nice landscape shots, um, maybe uh, on a tripod with some a little bit longer exposures. Um, it's it's pretty wide, so you can get some, you know, there's some opportunity there to get some good photos. And depending on how artistic you are and, you know, what kind of eye you have for photography, obviously that helps. But as far as the actual optics, I don't have a lot to help you there. But with video, um, I found that with some of those settings that I showed you there, you can really get a lot more out of the kit lens than say just running it in auto. And it can really help your videos look better and just give a better feel to your videos. Um, so that's it guys. I, I hope that was helpful. I, you know, I feel bad. People buy these cameras, they spend hundreds of dollars on them. And, and sometimes they think that the maximum quality is what you're going to get with the kit lens. And that's just not true. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, you know, the, the beauty of an interchangeable lens is that you, you are not limited by the body. The lenses make such a big difference. However, if you know what you're doing with this lens, you can get a lot more out of it than just running in auto mode. So I don't know. That's it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe. And that's it. Uh, have a great day. We will see you soon.